fire is spread by flames and also by the terrific heat that blows ahead of the flame, catching fire to everything in its path. Farther over, Mr. O'Brien's barn was burning. Mr. O'Brien kept three animals, Daisy the cow and two workhorses, Don and Pep. Daisy and Pep both were burned to death, but Don was saved. In answer to Mrs. Garman's telephone call, county fire trucks began to arrive. Mr. Garman jumped on the running board and directed the driver over the hill where several homes were in danger. The fire trucks seemed to go in every direction. Mr. Emery pointed far away where the flames were getting out of control. The fire spread so fast that many homes were in danger. More firemen rushed to help. They moved fast. The ladders and large hose were heavy but each man rushed to do his particular job. The firemen train every day to become more efficient, and they have had long experience in putting out fires. They have a great responsibility to save human life and property. Teamwork is necessary to fight a fire. The firemen are expert at working the large nozzles. The roof fell. Firemen can change the length and width of the stream of water. They use a strong, solid stream for putting out the fire. A wide spray of water is used like a screen to protect the firemen as they go toward the heat and smoke. One man alone could not handle the large, heavy hose. The firemen advanced steadily toward the fiery furnace. They took turns at the front of the hose. As the smoke became too much for the front man, another took his place and he moved to the back where the air was better. Water stopped the blaze and kept the heat and flying embers from spreading the fire. The front man turns the nozzle to change the stream of water. Every home should be prepared for a fire. The garden hose should always be attached to a faucet. No human could enter the house in these flames, but the problem of the firemen is to see the flame do not spread. Pete Dawson's home was completely destroyed and he and his brothers and sisters had no place to live. In bad fires like these after an earthquake or an atomic bomb, many people are hurt or killed by falling objects and walls. People should stay far away from burning buildings. The center roof fell first. Then another roof went down. Back at the Garmin Ranch, the boys beat out the flames with gunny sacks. They were tired, but proud that the firemen trusted them to handle this part of the fire alone. This relieved the firemen to work on the other side of the ridge where the fire was raging. Mr. O'Brien's barn still was burning. Patty's mother and Bill pulled a hose up to the back of the barn. Her father was worn out and Bill relieved him on the hose. Bill could be counted on to do a job like the older boys. But what happened? Bill was overcome by the smoke. Mrs. O'Brien too was hurt, hit by a falling branch. Patty's sister Barbara told the fireman on the truck to call the ambulance to pick up Bill, Mrs. O'Brien, and Ruth O'Brien. The ambulance was standing by in case anyone was hurt. In this terrible fire, no people were killed due to the quick thinking of the men and prompt first aid. The Red Cross always is ready to help in an emergency and gives aid to the people who are in trouble. The men lifted Bill carefully and placed him gently on the stretcher in the ambulance. He was not dangerously hurt, but his leg was burned, so his mother wanted the doctor to check him. The doctor treated Bill's leg, which was not burned seriously. Later, he was back helping with the fire. Mrs. O'Brien and Ruth O'Brien were taken along at the same time. Ruth's arm was burned. So off they went to the emergency hospital that had been set up in the school. Patty couldn't help crying. Her mother told her to stay near Ben, who milks the goats. Generally, a child can help most by staying out of the way of the people who are fighting a fire. Why, Charlie and Nellie from Mr. Mardell's ranch are running away. Probably someone led them out of a burning barn and let them run away to safety. Nellie's hurt. Patty herded the goats to the end of the corral, away from the smoke, and tried to talk calmly to the goats to keep them from getting excited. 
They might have stampeded and hurt each other. Her baby goat was trembling. If the fire should come too close, Patty's father would move the goats to another pasture. Back over the ridge, the firemen were trying to save Janie Brighton's home. How could any human being enter a building in the dense smoke? What causes these terrible fires? People are careless. They throw away matches and cigarettes that are still burning. They even smoke in bed, go to sleep, and drop their burning cigarettes. The firemen pulled out a burning Davenport. The fire can smolder and spread while a person sleeps. This fireman stayed near the floor because in a burning room, the air near the floor is better and easier to breathe. Flames and hot air rise and create a draft, which draws in the cool air near the floor or ground. See how the hot air and smoke rise from this house and the clear air sweeps in below. After a fire, you often see the firemen working in the attics, pulling out the walls and floors. Seems like unnecessary destruction of the building, but it is important to be sure that no hidden fire is buried in the frame to start up later and cause another fire. Firemen do everything they can to prevent water damage. Reporters and news photographers go to all large fires to learn about the fire and also to find human interest stories for their papers. Each man tries to get the news to his paper first. The tired firemen haul the heavy lengths of hose up the hill to the trucks. It takes time to clean and repair equipment and have it ready for the next fire. They stayed on guard through the night to be sure no new fires would spring up. The large number of fire trucks showed that many firemen still were working throughout the hills. The hook and ladder. You understand now why this fireman wore a helmet that would not burn and a coat that would shed water and that was extra heavy to protect him from the heat. His tool, a hose spanner, is used to tighten the joints that hold the lengths of hose together. The tools the firemen use most often are hose, nozzles, ladders, axes, and spanners. Bernie O'Brien pats old Don, the horse that was saved from the flame in O'Brien's barn fire. Mr. Emery told Mr. Garman about the damage at High Point. Refugees who yesterday had a nice home now trudged through the ruins, hoping to save something of value. Nothing was left standing, just an old car and the old stove. Poor Millie and Todd. Who wants an old roasting pan? Everything gone. And Millie's doll. It just seemed more than they could stand. After a great disaster such as a fire, earthquake, or atom bomb explosion, lack of water may be the most serious problem of all. More fires might break out, and so Mr. Horner had to dig out the water pipes that led to his home. Water is needed to put out new fires and for washing and drinking. Electric wires broke and fell to the ground. They might be live wires and might burn seriously or even kill the person who touched them. After any accident, never touch a fallen wire. Mrs. Garman thanked Mr. Emery for helping to save their farm. And Patty thanked him too. Just think, he let Patty hold the telephone that he used to convey messages from the front lines of the fire to the fire headquarters. Patty was too little to fight the fire but she did exactly the right thing. She stayed out of the way of the firefighters where her family could keep an eye on her. The Garmans felt like giving thanks that their home was spared. The black burnt grass in the pasture on the hill showed that the fire was stopped right at the road in front of the Garmans' house. How close it swept to their goats. Billy's face looked sad and tired. That day he grew up. It was a hard day but he found out that in an emergency, he could count on himself to do the right thing. Patty cried. Her mother comforted her and told her what a good girl she had been. Small children help most in a fire by staying out of the way. Garmin's close escape made them feel humble and thankful, and they wanted to help their neighbors. Could you help as much as the Garmin's did?